Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the conversation around Catholic sexuality. I'm Ellen. And I'm Kathleen. Welcome to the show. Hey, everybody. Ellen here. Welcome to another Charting Toward Intimacy episode. Just me today. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the need for authentically Catholic sex education For adults, Um, I'm not talking about the sex ed class that you got in high school, but I'm talking about real practical and theologically sound information about sex for married couples so they can navigate the ins and outs of their sex life. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about what authentically Catholic sex education is, why it is so necessary, and where you can go and where you shouldn't go to get the info that you need. But before we do that, we are going to answer a listener question. We answer a listener question at the beginning of every single episode. We have an open question box. You can submit your questions at any time. I will answer a question at the beginning of every single episode. And then because I get more than just four or five questions every month, I'm going to take all of the questions that were submitted that month and answer them in a more long form Q&A video that is available in our exclusive Charting Toward Intimacy community. You can join that community for just five dollars a month. You get that exclusive Q&A video every month, and you also get full video of all of the Charting Toward Intimacy episode that we have. So if you are interested in joining the Charting Toward Intimacy exclusive community, there is a link in the show notes. There is also a link in the show notes. There's always a link in the show notes to submit questions for this question time. So please feel free to submit those at any time. The question that we have for this week, I promise I did not write this myself, although... (laughs) If I could have written this myself, this would have been the question I would have written because it comes at a perfect time. So here's the question. Hey there, I love your podcast and learn so much every week. My question is this. I'm a newlywed and I have no idea where to begin reaching orgasm. Is this normal? How long does it typically take to figure it out? For reference, I've never masturbated and I was a virgin before marriage. So this is all new to me. Thanks for any tips. First off, thank you so much for asking this question, it can be really awkward and embarrassing to actually put out this question because nobody, nobody wants to ask it because our society wants to say that this is just something that should happen easily and with no additional work on your part. I just want to say that what society teaches about orgasm is really kind of all wrong. Now, there is a lot to this question. I can't answer it in the five minutes that I allot for these listener questions at the beginning of the episode. And that is why I created an entire course to answer this question. So introducing the orgasm course for Catholic women. This is available now. It launched just a few weeks ago. I did a bit of a soft launch over on social media. You might have heard that I launched it, Um, but this, we are officially launching it far and wide, and we have a special launch pricing of just $50 for this course until October 6th, Friday, October 6th, 2023. So if you're listening to this in real time, you have like five days before the price goes up to $99. So definitely get in on it now. This course has 18 videos, talk full of both practical and theological information about the orgasm, the female orgasm. We talk about anatomy. We talk about arousal curves. And then what we also really jump into is the partner aspect of an orgasm, that this isn't something that's done individually. I I'm so excited about this course. This just popped up onto my radar that this was something that was needed in our community here. And I sat down to start writing it and you guys, the Holy Spirit just did it. I mean, it happened so fast. I was actually talking to my husband about this the other day and he was just like, yeah, when you told me you were going to create this course, I thought it was going to take you a few months to create it. And I'm pretty sure it took about three to four weeks. So I'm just so excited about this. The link is in the show notes. If you want to get in on the orgasm course for Catholic women, click on that. All right. So let's jump back in to authentically Catholic sex education. Now, here's the thing is this orgasm course that I created, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later. This is exactly the example of authentically Catholic education that I am talking about because authentically Catholic sex education does not exist. And there's kind of like a couple of things that are out here 
that we're dealing with is one, nobody wants to talk about sex. I think this comes from kind of two angles. I think on one hand, this comes from the kind of spirit good, body bad, dualistic Manichaean heresy that we have in our church. Unfortunately, we've got this just like sitting on top of us. Um, And so people are like, still not really sure if sex is good or not. I'll just, you know, if you're a listener of the podcast, you know, sex is good. (laughs) Um, And if you don't know that, just take that to heart. (laughs) Sex is very good. So nobody wants to talk about it on that one end, but then I think on a more, on another end, that's even a little bit more, I don't know, good, right? If we have the heresy on one side, that's not a good thing. But on the other side, I think that people are afraid to talk about it because of a genuine concern of what is prudent and not prudent to share. I mean, this is something myself that I struggle with a lot. And I've um, been to spiritual direction kind of talking about, okay, well, what is prudent to share on this podcast platform, on my social media platforms, in the courses that I do, um, in my of my own life? You know, what is good examples and what is going too far? What is imprudent to share? Um, and so nobody really wants to talk about it because everybody's kind of afraid of going too far, or sharing too much information or or something else. And the other kind of another issue that we have is that our church, you know, because we don't want to talk about it on these two sides of the spectrum. We don't want to talk about it because we're afraid to talk about it um, because we're afraid to be uh, imprudent. And then also we don't want to talk about it because we're afraid to talk about it because we have some issue with our body. Uh, We think that the spirit is good and the body is bad and maybe sex is bad because of that. So the church just kind of says, no, 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 for a really long time. And then we get to marriage prep and the church is like, okay, you guys are going to have sex soon. Like, it's a good thing. Everybody hear me out. But we don't actually talk about what yes even means. You know, what What does it mean? I mean, suddenly our, our church is just telling us to flip a switch. And we've talked a little bit about this on the podcast before, but, you know, it, it's not easy for people to just flip a switch. Before we go a little bit further into this topic, I am going to ask you guys listening for a huge favor. If you are listening on a podcast platform that allows ratings or reviews, I would really like you to rate or review this podcast if this has been a blessing to you. If you have learned something from this podcast, if you have enjoyed this podcast at all, I would so appreciate a rating or a review. So that means if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, those are the two ones that allow ratings and reviews. This really helps get the word out about the podcast. It helps new people see the podcast and it also helps um, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, It helps their algorithms. And if you didn't know this, the other podcast platforms actually use the ratings and reviews from Apple and Spotify for their own algorithms as well. So it's really across the board can really help the podcast. It's one of the best ways that you can support the podcast. So I would so appreciate a rating and a review from you. Okay, let's jump back in. So where is it that people turn for like adult sex education then if our church is not providing it? So the first place that people turn is media. We're talking movies, TV shows, maybe a little bit of social media uh, and songs. And here's the thing is basically everything that you see in movies and TV shows is completely contrary to what is actually happening inside of a bedroom, what is actually happening in an arousal situation or what's actually happening between a husband and a wife. I legitimately was trying to find a movie or a TV show that had kind of a decent or good example of like a sexual relationship or even just like the buildup to a sexual encounter. And I legitimately couldn't find one. If anybody has one, please send it my way because I can't find anything that actually shows us truly what happened. Um, What we usually see in media is like there's the look and you know, everybody, it's just like a batting of the eyes and, or 
just a eyebrow raise or something. And then you see the couple walking off to the bedroom Um, or it's just suddenly they're ripping each other's clothes off. That's not how desire and arousal actually work. And so when people turn to the media to kind of understand, okay, um, let's see, I'm, I'm a virgin. I'm getting married soon. What is this even going to look like? And then they see these, what's going on in these movies. And then suddenly that's not what is happening inside of the bedroom. And they feel like something is broken or wrong. And that's not at all true. But I went through that myself. Another place that people turn is pornography. Now, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a like conscious turning to pornography, but subconsciously, pornography affects everything about what we think should be actually happening inside the bedroom. And sadly, a lot of secular like sex therapy programs or sex educators will actually encourage people to look at pornography or read erotica in order to, you know, spice up the sex life of a couple. And that is just so, so wrong. Pornography is is just ripping, ripping apart our marriages. And another place that people turn when, you know, the church is not talking about authentically Catholic sex education for adults is... They turn to secular or like non-denominational Christian sex educators. And we've got kind of an issue with with both camps. Yes, Christian sex educators absolutely are going to hold to, you know, sex should only be for marriage. But that's kind of the only line they draw. Unfortunately, um, secular and Christian sex educators by and large, typically recommend masturbation. They typically recommend contraceptives and, and, or they, they'll might recommend, you know, pulling out or hand jobs, um, things like that, that are not licit. And so we have this chasm. We have this huge, huge problem that there is nowhere to turn to actually get these answers. So, so then we ask, what is the solution? What I feel like I see is just this band-aid of, oh, just go read John Paul II's Theology of the Body. Like that'll, that'll answer all your questions. Well, I agree that John Paul II's Theology of the Body absolutely is going to answer a ton of questions about the theology behind our bodies and sex and the spousal union and all of that. Absolutely. Theology of the body answers a lot of those questions. We have two problems when we just put the band-aid solution of, oh, just go read theology of the body. One is a problem of the fact that the theology of the body is a massive textbook of some pretty deep theological concepts. I myself am studying the theology of the body for my master's degree, and I have a really hard time actually understanding some of the more dense text. I personally have yet to actually read it cover to cover as well. I'll admit that. Even though I've spent over 180 graduate level hours studying it. So when we just pass out this big, huge book or just tell people to read it. We're kind of just like throwing them into the ocean and expecting them to know how to swim before we've actually even taught them how to swim. I I agree that it has such, such good information. I mean, I love theology of the body. I study it, but we're not going to help people by just passing out the book. We need to disseminate the information in, in a way that is actually applicable and accessible uh, to the different levels. The other issue that we have with just using theology of the body as the band-aid for the issue of sex education is that it doesn't have anything practical in there for a reason. I mean, it is a theological study. Um, it is the it is his theology of our bodies, which is absolutely important. But if we're going to be talking about authentically Catholic sex education, we need theology and practical um, resources. We need we need the science behind it. And so I feel like when when people just jump to kind of passing out theology of the body and just saying, oh, that's the answer. That's the answer. 
We're trying to jump to the solution and and fix this problem without actually figuring out what the problem is, without actually asking the question, like what, what is the question that we have here? And the question is, you know, where do Catholics go? Where do married Catholics go or engaged Catholics who are trying to, who, you know, are really moving into that space and looking to get information about sex? Where do they go to get that information that is both practical and theological? And that is why we need authentically Catholic sex education for adults. We need practical resources that are based on real science and expertise, not just personal experience, because everyone's experience in the bedroom is going to be different. When I wanted to start jumping into this space, I realized that my personal experience was only going to help a very small population of people and that what I would need is a background in real science and an expertise in sexology itself. Now, I'm not going to go into the ethics of sex education research right now. That is a topic for a podcast episode in and of itself, but There is real research out there, and we have answers to a lot of questions that people are asking, but the places to find those answers, where I, what I've found is that wheat is growing like right next to weeds, just tangled together. And I personally can't in good conscience recommend very many programs or very many, you know, people or Instagram accounts to you all because I always want to ensure that I am providing you with theologically sound information and not leading you astray. Let me give you an example of that. Um, If you're a longtime listener, you would have heard a podcast episode back in the first roughly year of the podcast. I believe it was number 54. I don't actually know the exact number because it was before I was numbering the podcast episodes. And this, I was interviewing someone who called herself a Catholic sex coach. Um, At the time, she was mostly teaching and coaching in line with the Catholic faith. However, since then, she unfortunately has really gone astray. She's really fallen away from Catholic social teaching and the Catholic church itself. As such, I have removed that podcast episode from my catalog. I take these things very seriously I am never going to intentionally recommend something to you that is contrary to Catholic teaching. And if I do recommend something to you that is mostly in line, but maybe has something a little off, I'm always going to mention you have to watch out for this aspect of it. I am kind of excited to see that there are people who are starting to wake up to this need for authentically Catholic sex education. I saw recently that Femme Catholic uh, is doing some kind of an event in October 2023 uh, with sex education, which is awesome. I don't know very many details, but um, check it out. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Uh, Dr. Sarah Bartell, who we've had on the podcast a number of times, she has done some great things in this space. She has a a three-month course for women uh, wanting to kind of dive into sex a little bit more. But here's the thing. That's really the only two that I know of. (laughs) We need more. And that is exactly where this podcast and my company are headed and what I've already been doing for a number of months now. Um, I am currently dual enrolled in both a master's degree in theology of the body and a certificate in the fundamentals of sex therapy. I realized that no one is really talking about the practical aspect of sex education, Because almost no one in the Catholic world has that information to share because there aren't Catholic programs out there. And sadly, for some reason, the ones that do have that info to share, the people who call themselves Catholic and are also certified sex educator um, or things like that, they have dropped aspects of their Catholic faith and they're teaching things that are contrary to Catholic doctrine, which is so unfortunate. But I want to give you a promise as I continue to push into this space and bring you more resources for authentic Catholic sex education. I don't take a single step in this business and this podcast without prayer. I have people who listen to this podcast who I know are keeping tabs on me and my theology. 
I test everything I learn in these secular sex education programs with what I know from my background in theology. As someone who has stepped into an educator role, I know that what I teach and where I lead you is going to be brought up during my personal judgment. And I take that very seriously. So you can trust that with God's help and guidance, this podcast will remain true to Catholic teachings and faithful to the magisterium. You're going to start seeing some more practical sex education on the podcast, but you're also going to be seeing some more courses. And I kind of want to explain why I'm going to be saving some of this information for courses. Podcasts are very public. I cannot control in any way who hears this content. And while sex education is vitally important, uh, there are certain things that are only appropriate to share in a more private setting and really only to married people. Recently, I've had some people reach out to me via email or via Instagram asking some questions that I don't feel comfortable answering because I know that these people are not living out the truth of marriage and sexuality, and they're just looking for answers to questions that are not appropriate for them to be asking outside of the context of marriage. And so I I have to be so careful. And I realize that I have to be so careful uh, with what I share here in this very public platform. The orgasm course that I came out with is just the start. Uh, And I cannot wait to start digging into more. Um, I am planning some wonderful group coaching experiences, um, some larger multi-week courses. um, And I currently also, I have my one-on-one coaching. So if you're listening to this and you already know that you're looking for some guidance or one-on-one support with questions or difficulties around sex in your marriage, there is a link in the show notes to the application for my one-on-one coaching program. So definitely go check that out. And here's just what I want to end with is as our church continues on into this 21st century, we need authentically Catholic sex education because marriages are really the foundation. If our church is going to grow, where are those people going to come from? If we're going to get more priests, where are those priests going to come from? They're going to come from families, not just children in those families, right? But they're going to also come from seeing families authentically living out their Catholic faith. And part of authentically living out that Catholic faith is authentically living out our marriages. And part of that is truly having a good and fulfilling sex life. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time.